on the random. What does joining Hip Hop Now's Patreon mean? It means supporting the kind of hip hop content that keeps you updated on the latest hip hop news and moves. It means supporting the production of content like That Time in Hip Hop and Hip Hop Now Reviews. It means you care about the conversation and preservation of hip hop music and culture. Hip Hop Now Patreon supporters get access to bonus content, merchandise, and more. Support the movement. Become a supporter of Hip Hop Now Podcast today at patreon.com forward slash hip hop now. Coming up on this week's episode of Hip Hop Now Podcast, it is the best albums of 2021. Let's get it. Let's do it. Um, what else we got? Go time, show time. We'll just start the show. Well, let's let's get get ready. Ready. Read these headlines. This album must be gone. This, this album must be gone. This album must be gone. This album must be gone. This album must be What up, y'all? I am your host, Vegas, and this is Hip Hop Now Podcast, a podcast designed to catch you up on all things hip hop, music, and culture that happened throughout the week. This podcast, along with other podcasts that are available on this very stream, are brought to you by the producers of this podcast, the people that support the growth of this podcast over at patreon.com slash hip hop now if you would like to become a producer of this podcast and i know you say to yourself what do i get well you heard the intro but unless you skip the intro i'll tell you you can get exclusive and timed exclusive bonus content that's how it should go you know you also receive other perks that come along with that that you will find on the website as well as having input into the production of this podcast. Now, I will say this. Just because you donate to the show doesn't mean you run the show, but you are a part of the team. Your thoughts, your suggestions are definitely considered if they fit within it, but guess what? We haven't had any issues like that. So visit patreon.com slash hip hop now. Look at the different Levels that you can give at, you can give monthly, or you can make a one-time donation to this podcast. Everything you hear and some of the things you see online have been brought to you in part by those people that support. Do it today. The link is in the description of the episode you're listening to right now. So here we are, y'all. We are... In December, if you're from the future, you know what to do. Get your ass out of here. But it is time to talk about some of the best albums of the year. Every year I do this. Now, let me stop you, new person who I'm glad you came through, but let me stop you before you get too hyped. This is not my top five or my top ten of the year. I only do a top five. But the top five, that's the next episode. This is more like a buyer's guide for hip hop in 2021. Well, what does that mean? I'll tell you if you're going to ask me in my voice. Uh, <laughs> that just basically means that I'm going to run through literally the best projects to release this year. So if you're a person, maybe you caught one to that one, you caught one to that one, but you really don't have any idea of what was released let alone what was good that was released. This is the episode for you. It's a long list. So I'm going to tell you how I chose these albums. Obviously, I listened to all of them multiple times. Uh, But there's a process for this. We don't just pick albums because they came out. We pick them because they came out. They were great. And they were the gift that kept on giving throughout the year. And some of y'all probably forgot, but I'm here to remind you. So this is basically my listening process. 
for all of these projects. I listen once, and that's typically an impressions type thing, right? You know, what do I hear off the back? What do I like off the first listen? And if I like it, then I give it a second listen. Now, on the second listen, I'm listening more intently. I'm, 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 I'm getting a little bit deeper with what I pay attention to. Lyrics, beats, um, arrangement, you know, c- concepts. You know, it's, it's a deeper experience. And if I'm impressed by that, well, on the third listen, I kind of listen for enjoyment. So all of these albums you hear about, all of these projects you hear about on this podcast met those qualifications in one way or another. Let's get started. First up, A Magnificent Day for an Exorcism by 13, which is Farrell Monch, Daru Jones, and Marcus Machado. I think that's how you pronounce his name. This was an album that was literally... In my top five of 2021, when it dropped earlier in the year, we'll see if it stays there. Next, Mad Lib. You like instrumental albums, a little hip hop, a little electronic music and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? This is about 16 tracks deep. The name of the project is Sound Ancestors. So if you like instrumental albums and they don't have to be strictly boom bap, you like this project because this project is for the music fan who loves hip hop, but who loves a little experimentation. Next, Devin the Dude, Soulful Distance. If you know me, you know I'm a big Devin the Dude fan. And typically I like his music when he releases it, but sometimes he releases music and it's okay. But in 2021, Soulful Distance, the first record you're in. It sets the tone for the rest of the album. It's pretty dope. And what made it extra dope, and I'm not going to sing, but he starts out the lyrics with, I can't wait for the pandemic to end. Like, it was like the timing was perfect because we were on the other side of 2020, you know what I'm saying? Vaccines were getting ready to come out. It was like it was perfect timing, man. But it's just a great album overall, regardless of that. Next, I Am God and Custom Made, The Eternal Reflection. This album is lyricism. You know what I'm saying? Lyricism, concepts, Conscious raps, gangster raps, reality raps, whatever you want to call it. It's such a potent lyrical ride that the first time I listened to it, I knew that this was a nominee for my top five of the year. Now, we will see if it makes it there in the next episode, but I was that impressed by it. And the more I listen, the more I am impressed by the production and the lyrical skill, and how it all came together to form this album. Very dope. Bun B and L.E.S. Distant. Now, some people didn't know this came out. Shout out to Yentz, who put me on to it. I peeped the project, but I was I like Bun B, but I didn't know much about L.E.S. So I was a little apprehensive. But I said, well, what the hell? It's an EP. Press play. And when I say I pressed play on it and I loved it because of the vibe, it was chill, it was quick because I don't really deal with the the long ass albums. I just can't do them sometimes regardless of who they are, Kanye. Uh, (laughs) But when I heard this, I was like, wow, this is really cool and chill and the rhymes are dope and the vibe is crazy. Um, I liked it a lot. So Bun B and L.E.S., it's an EP. Check that out. An even shorter record, Drake, Scary Hours 2. I do not have his album on here, but I do have this three-song pack, right? Only three records on this joint. But when I tell you, 
it's probably been a while since there was a project that only had three records that I just kept on repeat. I just kept repeating. I kept listening to it. I couldn't stop. I thought it was pretty dope. That Lemon Pepper Freestyle, man, I'm telling you. Next, Currency. You know he dropped about 20 albums per year, but this one stood out to me. Collection Agency. If you know Currency, you know the the vibe. The first track, Cush Through the Sunroof, you already know what it is. It's just, it was cool. You know, I rocked out to it all year. I still listen to it now. Um, is it in my top five of the year? I don't know. We shall see. Denzel Curry and Kenny Beats Unlocked 1.5. I like the cover, and I've heard stuff from Denzel Curry. I'm not a big fan, but I've heard stuff from him that made me say to myself, I kind of like this dude. And, man, when I press play, it's it's like, don't get me wrong, it's not Run the Jewels, but it's something about the vibe that felt like it. Or different. And I think that's what I really liked about it. The cover really caught my attention more than anything. Um, but I think it's one of the best projects, so check it out. One of the best projects this year. Benny the Butcher, the plugs I met too. Benny the Butcher and Harry Fraud. Now, I'm going to tell you straight off the bat, I don't like everything that Harry Fraud touches. Sometimes it's dope, sometimes it's not. I didn't think this was going to be that great. I felt like, because it was a different vibe from the plugs I met, that it wasn't that good. But then I found myself listening more than I anticipated. I mean, frequently. Especially favorite track on there, overall featuring Chinks. It's just really a cool, a dope project. It's it's not Tana Talk 4, but... It is a very dope project from Benny the Butcher. Check it out. It's another quick joint. Not three songs, but let me see. What is it? Nine songs. So pretty dope. Here's another one you wouldn't anticipate. Onyx. Yes. (laughs) Onyx for life. Now, I was hesitant, but I kept hearing that the album was actually good. Now, when I've heard Onyx records in the recent past, They never sound bad to me, but I just didn't know if I would like it until I press play. And I'm telling you, if you think you know what an Onyx record sounds like in 2021, you might be kind of right, but not 100%. These guys age like fine wine, and it doesn't sound old. Now, if you haven't heard them since Slam, then you're going to be disappointed because they probably put out, they had a three-album run that was crazy. All of it was shut them down. I think that was the third one. Um, and can't remember the second one, but you know what I'm talking about. So Onyx for Life, a new album in 2021 from Onyx, one of the best of this year. Believe that. Here's another one that was referred to me. Shout out to Yints again. 101, Whatever Happens happens. I know you're thinking to yourself, who the hell is that? Some of them know. It's only 11 songs. It's only 32 minutes. But man, you want to talk about beats and bars? As soon as I press play, you know how you press play on something? You're like, damn, this, that song was crazy. Oh, that song was crazy. Oh, that's... By the, by the time you realize that you're at the end of it, and you have to tell yourself... This album was one of the best, because it was. So definitely check that out. Mellow Music Group. This is a label, right, that promotes, or label or promotional company, one or the other, that promotes several hip-hop acts, some of which you know, right? Like, let's go down the names. Open Mike Eagle, right? You might know him. Homeboy Sandman, you might know him. Odyssey, you know him. Sky Zoo is on here. Who else is on here? Joel Ortiz is on here. Staley or Staley or whatever. Apollo Brown. It's a couple of these cats. I picked this joint because you want to talk about a compilation that is like exhibits what underground hip-hop really is. 
it's not one sound. It's a variety of sound. And it's really dope. It's really dope. Like, you feel good. If you're a longtime hip-hop fan and you hear this Bushido uh, album with all these different acts, with all these different sounds, all hip-hop, it kind of made me smile because it was like, wow, here's a project where everybody doesn't sound the same or, or everybody's not talking about the same things. Or I can't anticipate what the next record will sound like, but I know it's going to sound good. That was the feeling I got from listening to that project. You're welcome, <laughs> Mellow Music Group. Keep going. Conway the Machine, La Makina. I think I've been messing that up all year. Look, Conway the Machine, we know how he get down, man. But when that bruise, Bruiser Brody hits the first track, you already know what it is. This is one of those side projects that Griselda's like to dump on you. And this is, uh, pause. <laughs> this is dope, right? Arguably the best Griselda release this year, but maybe I'm exaggerating. Who knows? But I know for me, definitely one of the top of the year. You're talking about bars, talking about beats. Perfect. This can be an album. He don't even have to release nothing else. This could be an album for the year. He gone. It was that dope to me. Snoop Dogg, From the Streets to the Sweets. Snoop Dogg usually has like a hit or miss record when it comes to his albums, right? Hit with this album, miss with the next one. Hit with this album, miss with the next one. Well, the last album he had, from which the name I can't really remember, wasn't bad. I think it was the, uh, I'm not even going to try. But you know what I'm talking about, the thankful or whatever. Thank you, thank me later, thank the boss, whatever it is. But when he came out with this joint, I was like, well, the last one was good. This is probably the whack one. And I was wrong. Snoop Dogg from the streets to the suites is, if you come in here to hear Snoop Dogg from the West Coast, that's exactly what you're going to get. All the sounds, all the features. It's a real, real West Coast type vibe in rhymes and beats and features. And I I love the joint. And, you know, I, I bumped it all, all year and continue to play it now. Now, this was a series of EPs uh, for which all of them are dope. It's a dude whose mixtape I've been championing, championing, right? Since I guess the 2010s is when it came out, sometime around that. It was a long time ago. And I wondered, like, damn, that dude was dope, man. He had concepts, he could rhyme, he had a delivery that was dope. What happened to him? Well, apparently he took some time off to raise a family and, and do some other things. And he came back in 2021. And he came back better than ever, right? He released three EPs from what I remember. One is called Soil. The other one's called Seeds. And the other one is called Roots. And all three of those joints, I think it was like every week he released one for three weeks. And all of them joints were hot. Now, I'm kind of upset that I didn't go and check to see if he actually released the album after that. But we going off of what I heard. And from what I heard, you need to go check those out. The dude's name is XV. You would not be disappointed. Trust me. Still bumping those joints. Czarface and MF Doom. Super what? We lost MF Doom. It was a blow to hip hop. But I knew there had to be an album on the way. And lo and behold, Czarface comes out with a new album featuring MF Doom. And it is dope. So if you know Zarface and you like him, you're probably up on this. But if you only really mess with MF Doom and you want some new material, this is the one for you. It fits the description of what you're probably looking for. I'm not even on front. I'm not even going to hold you, fam. <laughs> J. Cole, The Off Season. The minute I heard this album, I was like, Wow. This is exactly what I, you know, what I wanted from J. Cole. Bars, beats. 
I didn't even anticipate the features, but the features worked for me. J. Cole made a statement with this album, The Off Season. It, it was dope because anyone who is a day one J. Cole fan knows about his mixtapes and the theme that surrounded basketball, right? Well, here's another theme for his new album called The Off Season, and man, it delivered. Y'all, some of y'all get rid of albums real quick because everybody liked it, but then they're like, oh, I forgot about it. it. must not be great. No, it's still great. Okay, I listened to it. Mac Hami Pray for Haiti. Now, I'm not even going to try to be, oh, I've been on Mac Hami. I've been buying all it. No, I haven't. And yes, the reconnection with Griselda Records piqued my interest. But what's really dope about this album is not... A Griselda cosign. It's the fact that not since Wyclef did it with the carnival, the way he incorporates Haitian culture into what he says, how he says it, it feels authentic, which it is, right? It is authentic. But man, it just... It's nothing like it. I think that's I think that's what I just want to say. There's nothing that came out this year that is comparable to it. And we're not just talking about bar for bar or beats. We're talking about the entire crux of the album and what you hear in it, from the lyrics to the beats to the concepts to the flows being varied. There's nothing like it out. And I think for a lot of people, this is probably in their top five or top 10 of the year. But for me, we'll find out if it's in my top five of the year. But it's definitely one of the doper albums of 2021. All right. Yeah, I'm not ready for this next one. Peter Rosenberg. Yes. Hot 97. ESPN. WWE from time to time. He put out a compilation this year with some of his favorite uh, artists. He's not rapping on here. I don't believe so. I don't remember it. But you talking about someone who puts together a compilation as a fan of a, a number of these artists and they know exactly how the music should sound. If you know West Side Gun, and Griselda's music, then when you hear the record on this compilation called Stain, it doesn't sound like it's not a Griselda record. Flea Lord's on here. Styles P is on here. Ransom's on here, right? Ghostface is on here. Homeboy Sandman, we mentioned him earlier. 12, 12 songs, 13 songs, 33 minutes. Not taking a lot of time out of your life surprisingly dope album in 2021. Next, now this album is on a number of people's top five or 10. Definitely on your top albums list for 2021. That is Sky Zoo's All the Brilliant Things. Sky Zoo is like, he's like the perfect rapper. Let me just say, that's the best way I could describe him, right? His his delivery is so clean. You will never not understand a word he's saying. He's so clean with how he delivers his lyrics to you. The music is just as clean. It's never a mystery. Not that it would be, right? It's never a mystery as to what you're hearing. He puts these albums together like artwork like like a, a a thesis statement that you get two A's right you know how they give you we'll give you two A's and two pluses you did so good I know what I know not pluses but whatever but you get my point Sky Zoo never disappoints and for many of these top five of the years and top albums of the year that I do Sky Zoo is always, always, always on the list because he's so consistent in the music he creates. Even when he creates a project that I'm like, man, 
he drops another one where I'm like, oh, that's it. That's the one. That's what the wait was for. So definitely do yourself a favor if you haven't already. Sky Zoo, all the brilliant things. I know you're saying to yourself, that got to be in this top five. Look how you're talking about it. We shall see. RJ Payne, Leatherface 3, There Will Be Blood. Well, you talk about, now, when this, when this project dropped, it's only 36 minutes, which is cool with me, you know. I was doing like a weight training thing in the gym. So, you know, when you lifting weights and you listening to some, some rappers that be like growling, like, I open your head with the, you know you get extra with the, with the lid, like, y'all, y'all want to do another set. It just, <laughs> it just happens that way. Uh, now I'm trying to lose that weight. Uh, but definitely a dope album. If you like that grimy hip hop, do yourself a favor. This one's a keeper. Next, an album you've probably heard about. You're probably wondering if you're not a Tyler fan, if you never really heard of him, if you didn't even know he rapped. Our face, Wolfgang. If you didn't even know he rapped, you're probably saying, is that album actually that good? Because I've seen him win awards. I've heard some people talk about it. But I just don't know if it's something whack. Well, I'm here to tell you. Tyler, the creator, call me if you get lost with DJ Drama is definitely in my top five of the year. It's the only one I'll let you in on because the minute I heard it, I was like, wow, this is the type of album that from a hip hop artist that inspires other hip hop artists to pick up their pen and create. And when you can do that, well, not sound, while, while not sounding one-dimensional in your delivery, don't get me wrong, it's not all boom bap. It's a little singing on here, but it's, it's put together so well as an album. Definitely one of the best of the year. You will see the minute, the minute you press play on it, you'll be like, oh, I hear it. Okay, you wasn't lying. Oh, yeah, you was right. This, yeah, this joint is all right. Next, Nas and Hit Boy, King's Disease 2. Now, last year, 2020, King's Disease was in my top five of the year. When I heard King's Disease 2, one, I couldn't believe they had a whole nother album that they were dropping now, right? In 2021, you just dropped one. Everybody was everybody loved it. Yeah, the firm reunion and everything. King's Disease 2, oh man, I'm scared. Y'all going to the well too many times. What does this sound like? Man, it sounds better. Now, I know that's debatable for some people, but man, when you press play on this joint, the repeat value is there. It's just some great songs, some great beats, some great concepts from, from Nas. I mean, when's the last time you heard EPMD and Eminem and Nas on the track. That doesn't even sound right. When's the last time you heard Lauren Hill spit? She's on his album. That's rapping for those who don't know. She's not actually spitting. Just a really good album from Nas and Hit Boy to follow it up on a Grammy award winning first King's Disease. So definitely in my top five of the year. Now this one is probably going to go in the slept on category. Blue and Surplus. It's an EP called For Sale. It's only 18 minutes. But when I was listening to this EP, I was like, I don't know anyone talking about this. This is, this is, this is blasphemy. <laughs> How could you not, as a hip hop head, have known about this? It's a very dope EP. Don't take a lot of your time. So I would say check it out when you get the opportunity to do so. Because me personally, I found it to be very, very, very dope. AZ Do or Die. If I told you, no, AZ Do or Die too, my bad. But if I told you that AZ would drop a sequel to his debut album this year, 
not too long after we just got another album from uh, Nas. You know, people were waiting like, Foxy next? Nature about to drop? Cormega about to drop? It was that kind of hype. And when I tell you that even though I didn't rate this album that high because I reviewed it, I still feel like it's one of the best of the year. If you're an AZ fan, I think you'll like it. Is it a comparable sequel to Do or Die? I don't think so. But I think also it's a very different time. How could it be the same? I think for what it is, it's good. The only thing I would take points off of is just too much singing on there. It's like it gets old really quick in that regard. But it becomes background noise after you listen. Because then you realize, yeah, none of that matters. As long as AZ sounds dope and the features are dope, who cares? And AZ and Rick Ross sound magnificent together. Now here's one that a lot of hip-hop heads have no idea about. But when I pressed play after hearing about it, I was like, wow. This is slept on with a lot of hip-hop heads. It's Little Sims. Sometimes I might be introvert, embargoed. When I tell you this album is dope, I do not exaggerate. You're talking about rhymes. You're talking about music. It's just, it's just such a surprisingly dope album to a person who's not anticipating this artist because you've never heard of him. Please, please. Well, please and please, <laughs> press play on Little Sims. I think you will not be disappointed because I wasn't disappointed. Here's another one. From Blue, The Color Blue. This album I also felt was surprisingly dope and surprisingly also slept on. Now, I say that even though I've seen it show up in a couple of lists. But when it dropped, I didn't, I didn't see nothing on social media. And I got to it late. And I kept thinking to myself, like, wow, nobody's nobody's listening to this? He's trying his eye. Another dude, like Sky Zoo, who is extremely consistent at what he does. He just, he just is. He drops, you know, the lyrics are potent and the music is good, and it's almost as if when he drops, you don't even have to worry. You just know it's going to be good. It's, it's similar to Sky Zoo in that way. So definitely, if you haven't, check out that album from Blue. He dropped two dope joints, and they just both made my top of 2021. That says a lot, right? A couple of these people on this list have dropped multiple projects, but only have one represented in my list. Think about that. Next, Remedy meets Wu-Tang. When I tell you, I saw this album and its cover several times and said to myself, yeah, I'm good. Like Nori would say, I'm good on the flunkies. I don't really care about them. I don't care what Wu members are in there because that's typically what happens with the flunkies. I just rather have a Wu-Tang Clan album. Well, guess what? After watching the video for the song uh, Crazy Eight, I was watching the video and I was like, damn, this song sounds mad good. This almost sounds like a Wu-Tang record. And then it was to the point, if I didn't look at the screen, I didn't know when Remedy Rhyme, all of it sound good. So then I went and listened to the album. And the album, even though you know it got guests like Conway the Machine on there, it's like listening to a Wu album because you some records you got Met the Man and Ghost and Inspect the Deck. Other records you it's just RZA. Another record is Capadonna. You know, and other records got just Ghost. It, it, I was highly impressed by it. Surprisingly dope is another one of those joints. Surprisingly dope. So if you watched the Wu Tang series this year and you felt and, and said to yourself like. Man, I wish the Wu would drop something new that recaptures that feeling of the Wu-Tang Clan from back then, the early 90s Wu albums. 
you might want to pick up this Remedy Meets Wu-Tang because uh, it's pretty close. I mean, it just means that now they got a, a group member who's white, but I don't really skip past his bars, so it fits and it works. And uh, what I would say, lastly, a late addition to my best of 2021. I hope you've been writing them all down or pausing it or whatever. This one, surprisingly dope because I looked at the cover and I was like, this looks like trash. Until I press play. Styles P in Havoc. The locks in Mob Deep. Styles P and Havoc put an album out together called Wreckage Manor. When you look at the album cover, do not be alarmed. The album cover looks like trash, but the but the actual project is far from it. Only 31 minutes, 10 songs, but when you hear records like Pay Me in Cash, you're like, oh, oh, that's that boom bap. Oh, oh, that's that locks. Oh, oh that's that mob deep. It's really dope and really worth your time. All of these records, all these albums, all these projects that I mentioned are worth your time because I spent the whole damn year listening to them. Nah, I'm joking. (laughs) Worth your time because they're just dope hip hop. And every year, especially at the beginning of the year, I always wonder, what are we going to get this year? Is this going to be the year where it's difficult or not difficult I mean, let me start say, if is it difficult? Because I'm, I'm burying the lead. My point. It's always a year where I'm gonna feel like, is this the year where it will be easy to pick my top five? This is probably the fourth or fifth year in a row where it is not. And if you want to know out of those albums I named what my top five is, definitely check out the next episode. That's going to do it for me. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Clubhouse, all of it at Vegas World INC. If you want to chat it up, like what's what's your favorite albums of 2021? Follow me on those social media networks. Subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening. Leave a review of this podcast wherever you're listening. But more importantly, share this kind of content with people you know. Enjoy it. Until next time, y'all, I am not a critic. I'm a fan. Peace. Dropping on the random.